But joining us now to commune is Republican Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. So, Senator Johnson, um, apart from the fact that Joseph Schumpeter said don't vote for Biden's uh, tax hikes and Donald Trump says don't vote for Biden's tax hikes, I'm kind of excited that the Democrats want to use dynamic scoring of their tax hikes. What say you? Well, I'm amazed they'd want to do that because, <laughs> let's face it, if it's, an, if it's an honest dynamic score, it's going to look awful for them because you and I both know you don't tax your way into prosperity. Uh, gr growing government reduces freedom. And what made this country great wasn't big government. It was freedom that allowed Americans to dream and aspire and build and create this marvel we call the American economy. And that's what Democrats don't understand. It's what uh, you know, most Republicans do understand. Senator, I was really amazed at the uh, Bloomberg story I quoted that Ms. Yellen is in an interview is saying American companies are going to push to back the tax hikes, including the uh, G20 tax hike. Um, because I got in touch with the leaders of the business roundtable, and you probably are in touch with them too, but they're completely opposed to the whole thing. So I don't know who she's really talking about. But here's where I want to go with you. It, Senate is reconvening. Okay, you're, you're back in town. Here you are. We're glad to see you. There's no budget resolution yet. We don't know anything really about the details of the infrastructure package. And we, other than some vague wish lists, we don't know very much about the so-called human infrastructure and the Green New Deal and the tax hikes. So what's going on? I mean, it doesn't look like there's any there there at the moment. Well, by the way, going back to uh, the corporations supposedly supporting slitting their own throats, the, the question I had was, you know, what, what carrots are they dangling in front of them or what sticks are they threatening them with to support uh, this, uh, you know, corporate tax increase? It doesn't make any sense. But, uh, you know, what's, what's going on in Washington, D.C., unfortunately, is, is, is bipartisanship. And I always warn people, beware of bipartisanship, because one thing I can tell you in Washington, D.C., that can be accomplished on a bipartisan basis is the mortgaging of our children's future. Uh, people like to spend money. And unfortunately, that's uh, spent on, on a bipartisan basis. So, you know, from my standpoint, uh, what the Republican position has always, should have always been in terms of infrastructure, because we all support infrastructure. Uh, and in normal times, maybe the discussion they, they would have, they're, that they're having, might make an awful lot of sense, but these aren't normal times. We're $28 trillion in debt. We've just, you know, basically passed $6 trillion in debt of spending. We're seeing the, the warning signs of inflation screaming at us right now. But what we should be doing is the $1.9 trillion COVID relief package, $700 billion of that isn't even scheduled to be spent till 2022 and beyond. Take that $700 billion, repurpose that for $700 billion worth of infrastructure spending. You could have that deal overnight. I would actually support that because it would do a lot of harm or reduce a lot of harm from the $700 billion or more entitlement programs uh, that are scheduled to, to further mortgage our kids' future. But you know, okay, that's fair enough. I would agree with you, by the way. The repurposing is a terrific idea. And the rest of it, by the way, should be local bonding, as it always is for infrastructure projects. You have a 20-year project, you can sell a 20-year uh, tax-free bond. But, 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 I don't think anybody knows, I don't know, I've called around, perhaps you know, what happens to the rest of it, the so-called human infrastructure, which includes the Green New Deal and includes... Uh, you know, the, all the tax cuts. Originally, the income tax hikes, the corporate tax hike was going to finance infrastructure. I take it that's no longer the case. But that means they're going to put it all into the second bill, which would be reconciled somehow with 51 votes in the Senate. So you need a budget res, right, sir? You can't have reconciliation without a budget res, but we don't have anything. You think that's going to get done in July and or August or what? Well, I'm reading reports that Democrats are going to get their budget deal done yet this week. And, you know, what I can say with the greatest deal of assurance is that what they will spend money on is more entitlements. Uh, now, they may end uh, in five years in the future, supposedly on paper, so they can get a decent score. But they, Democrats realize that the, the government only ratchets in one direction. It goes up. And once you lay in a new entitlement, it's almost impossible to remove it. So that's the game they're going to be playing here. They're, they're going to be trying to pass as many new entitlements as possible. That's what they did in the COVID relief bill. Uh, they'll schedule them out for a couple of years, and then supposedly the program sunset. They'll, they won't sunset. They'll be reauthorized, and we'll continue to mortgage our kids' future. That's the game that the Democrats are playing right now.
right now. That's the, the wool they're going to try and pull over the American people's eyes. Uh, Senator Johnson, last one. September 30th ends the fiscal year, as we know. At that point, are you going to need a continuing resolution? Are you going to be able to pass an extension of the debt limit ceiling? And in general, you know, individuals and companies, we don't really know what's going to happen here. There's so much uncertainty. Numbers flying about, tax threats flying about, spending threats. I mean, I'd say it's pretty frazzled and disorganized right now, but you do have a September 30th deadline. This is the middle of July. So what say you? Is this going to get done or what? Well, Democrats have a lot easier passing a budget resolution because they really don't care about deficit spending. And so from my standpoint, they, they ought to be able to pass some kind of budget resolution uh, because they can do that with just their majority. Uh, so, you know, we may have to do a, a uh, continued resolution, but any increase in the debt ceiling, we, we have a resolution in the Republican conference now that calls for, uh, in order for us to support an increase or a suspension of the debt ceiling, we have to pass some kind of fiscal control. I suggested the Preventing Government Shutdown Act. Uh, we got Pat Toomey's full faith and credit. Rick Scott has a bill on the table. We should get something for further mortgage our kids' future. I'm afraid Democrats uh, just could care less. Would a government shutdown be a Republican proposal in order to stop the wave of tax hikes and entitlement spending? Well, no, you know, listen, I don't like government shutdowns because they're incredibly wasteful of money. That's why I proposed a government, a preventing government shutdown act that says if you don't pass budgets, if you don't pass appropriation bills, you don't shut the government down. You just keep operating those parts of government at last year's levels. Right. So what we do in Wisconsin is right. very common sense. You'd be enormous fiscal control because it'd give us some kind of leverage in these negotiations where yeah. generally the only leverage you have is spending more money. I like that a lot, sir. I think that is a terrific idea. Okay, Senator Ron Johnson, Wisconsin. We appreciate it, sir. Hope you come back and help us through all this stuff.